Hello, my name is Dante Renee, and welcome to the 10 Room Bizarro YouTube page where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more. Like tonight's film, 1972's Die Bet Hostessen. I know this is German, I'm probably mispronouncing it, but it is roughly translated The Bed Hostesses. I'm going to try to get the cover right here block some of the cover. Yes, that's a topless woman on the bottom with a snake over her crotch. And here we go. That's the front. And we can get a little bit of the back here as well. Okay, very, very difficult here, folks. Sorry with the YouTube standards. Uh, but this is The Bed Hostesses from 1972, and this is directed by um, Erwin C. Dietrich. And this is put out by Ascot Elite, who also puts out a, a, a Jess Franco collection, uh, all the Jess Franco films that are produced by Erwin C. Dietrich, which you can watch tons of videos on my YouTube page. Uh, for those films uh, released on these uh, German region-free Blu-rays. Now, this particular one is part of the new Ingrid Steger collection, and I've also done other films in this rare German region-free collection um, on this YouTube page as well. Uh, so definitely check those out. Um, so we this is a rare this is an extremely rare and unknown film i purchase all of these off of diabolicdvd.com and they're not cheap this one in particular for some reason was the rarest one um and this is directed by uh, as i said erwin c dietrich and produced by him and we also have music by walter baumgartner and we have uh filming uh, by peter baumgartner yes and uh, you will know that duo from many other erwin c dietrich films and you will also know uh, Walter Baumgartner's music in general for all of the Dietrich films that I've looked at in this YouTube page, the six Swedes films, even some Franco films, I'm just Franco films. So really, uh, what a duo here uh, who've done just tons and tons of films. So the bed hostesses here uh, has Ingrid Steger in it, and uh, but for a very small role uh, to be part of the Ingrid Steger collection, but a very, very small role for her. Uh, but we also have a lot of faces, male and female faces, that you will recognize from other Erwin C. Dietrich films, which is very common uh, for Erwin C. Dietrich, otherwise known as, um, in this particular film, he's using a... Um, a pseudonym of, I believe, Michael Thomas, which he is, which he uses uh, occasionally in his films. So you're going to see some familiar faces. You're also going to see some familiar faces in some Franco films that were produced by Erwin C. Dietrich. So this is of uh, a softcore anthology film that is based around a very interesting premise of. A window washer uh, on the outside of it says elite films or universal pictures but it's in another country I think it might be it's referenced to be Sweden at times it could be Germany um, and he's a window washer and he goes inside and speaks to the head of this movie company which actually is Erwin C. Dietrich and he basically says I have some movie ideas based on my different work experiences and he has many many different work experiences because it's only in the diversity of his work experiences not just a window washer but many other things that he can meet all these different types of women now this is where all of his stories that he speaks to Erwin C. Dietrich, um, all of his stories become the anthology, the stories within the bed hostesses. And as, uh, you know, these stories could be turned into movies as Erwin C. Dietrich is writing these stories down. So let's get into this film, folks. I have a good number of notes here. So you're going to see my eyes divert. Notes dealing with everything such as the music and the styles uh, and the stories and the characters and the vibes and the feels. Take this journey with me to 1972's Erwin C. Dietrich's The Bed Hostesses. What a what a extremely rare film, and it's rated 16, um, which is absolutely unheard of uh, in in America at least, because this particular film would definitely get probably an NC 17, um, but uh, 16.
16 right here. Ash got Elite, and I purchased this for about 25, 26 bucks, something somewhere around there, I believe. Now, unbelievable music by Walter Baumgartner in this film, and we go right into the gates with awesome freewheeling wild jazz right in through the gates with this freewheeling wild jazz um and at the beginning of the film it's al almost seemingly as if we're getting clips from other Irwin C. Dietrich films um in the beginning of the film kind of representing uh the window washer kind of meeting this director and this director all of his films that he has done so very very interesting and i believe i i noticed and recognized um pieces of of these films uh, so it's kind of a, a a hodgepodge of them a montage of them of sorts now also Interestingly enough, the window washer is our narrator for the film, but he's not narrating to you and I as the viewer. He he's his narration is actually his conversation with Erwin C. Dietrich, with the with the, the director or producer that he's talking to. And if you look behind Erwin C. Dietrich, you will see a. a, a a poster for one of his films that I've looked at on this YouTube page. It's a kind of a Erwin C. Dietrich's um, version of the Schoolgirl Report films. He did three of them, and it's a poster that I have on my wall right here, but I cannot show it because it's, um, you know, profuse, topless nudity. But for Blutjung Verkfunen, I believe uh, the series is called, so you can find all three uh, of those videos on this YouTube page. And we start off with a story dealing with a hostess, a, a plane, an airplane hostess, who's, who's bringing back a kind of a, a, a bike racer. And this hostess is Ingrid Steger's only role in the film. Um, and she's bringing him back. And the window washer is playing a masseuse in this particular story. And this one really has the theme of athletes and the groupies that athletes have and the sexuality of being an athlete. Now, the interesting thing that I want to note about this film is that there's a very strong, witty sense of comedy in this film. It's not your typical, you know, Erwin C. Dietrich is very light. Um, he, has, he has a lot of lightness to his films, even if it's a women in prison film. He has a lightness to his films. And in this particular film, the lightness is... I thought it was different. It was uh, wittier, not as, um, you know, kind of uh, goofy or, um, and I love all of it. So when I say goofy, it's just, a, I'm just saying something different. It's, um, it has a, it has a, almost a more serious comedy if that makes sense. Uh, not the typical sex comedy uh, type of vibe, uh, but there's some real kind of uh, witty, interesting dialogue uh, throughout this film. Now, we also have um, the story of the window washer looking in through a window. And so he's a window washer in this particular uh, uh, historical story he's sharing. And he sees a woman bathing in a bathtub. And this one is really wild um, because we have... Um, kind of the humor of this, uh, our narrator has a lot of humor because he has a lot of cockiness. Uh, he talks a lot about his body, but his body is by no means what people, you know, what the average woman would consider hot and sexy, but he considers it hot and sexy. So there's some humor in that. And we have him uh, going into this woman's room and they're about to engage sexually. And then a repo man comes in. Yes, a repo man comes in. There's some go-go dancing. There's some old time jazz in this particular story. Um, there's an inspection. Uh, inspecting the mattress is uh, the way to inspect the the mattress um, and and it's to have sex on it and a naked man balls out in the closet the, the closet falling over um, and then we go into another story that takes us into the winter that takes us into the snowy fields um, and our narrator says that he was a kind of a, a worked for sleigh rentals, although I didn't see him actually pulling the sleigh, which was very interesting. You don't see him at all in this particular story, I don't believe. And but it's sleigh rentals. Now this one was very interesting um, because 
there's something bizarre going on here, and I was trying to catch it, um, but I don't know if there was something incestuous going on here, um, it, or, or, or just friends, but something very, very interesting. Um, but there was a strip game, like a strip gambling game, which seemed to be with a family, like a mother and, and siblings, possibly, but possibly not. I, I could have misinterpreted it. And we have ethnic guitar, exotic guitar in this particular, um, in this particular story. And definitely, um, the hottest of the simulated softcore sex sequences in this entire film, I believe, is really in this story. And it's a lesbian sequence. Um, and there, it involves roses, you know, uh, a long stem roses and, 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 and nipples and this beautiful shot cascading over the women's breasts and the way they're, they're, they're laying and sitting and the roses all over the body. Um, really, really a, a, an amazing soft core scene there. Now, we also have this other story that is dumbfounding in and of itself and slightly what, what is exactly is happening here, but supposedly uh, a hospital, doctors, nurses, and a serum, a monkey serum, I believe, that makes uh, big penises. Yes, we also have enemas and surprise enemas during sex as well. And the violation of an unknowing person with a rose. Another rose. So another kind of a connection to the previous story. Very, very interesting. Um, an enema needle uh, really looking like it's going inside a guy's butthole. Um, and just a really wild hospital uh, sex story here. And then we go to another story that deals with a model and her dealings in photography and movies, you know, kind of getting her name out there, trying to be somebody. It almost sounds like a typical Hollywood story of a girl who's going to Hollywood and gets taken advantage of. They mention the director Fellini in this particular story. And if you look on the wall, you can see a poster of Fritz the Cat by Ralph Bakshi. Yes. Um, and th throughout this film, you have characters looking in the camera and uh, not by accident, uh, on purpose. And um, there is a mystique to that, and there's a power to that, and there's an intensity to that, especially when a naked woman is dancing in, you know, dancing and looking right at you as the viewer. Um, and we have a lot of racial diversity in this film, ethnic diversity as well. We have, uh, we have uh, black and white, and we also have, I believe, Middle Eastern. It's a very interesting thing. Going on. Of course, German. Uh, there could be Swedish in here as well. Um, but lots of different skin tones and colors, which Erwin C. Dietrich definitely does. Also, Franco does. But Erwin C. Dietrich, I believe, really did that because within sexploitation, as I mentioned this before, within... Um, X-rated cinema as well, not just uh, softcore. It's rare to have a lot of racial diversity in the films, but this one definitely has it. And they even mention um, the X-rated actress Linda Lovelace in this particular storyline. And we kind of have the whole concept of kind of the casting couch, you know, the the uh, the um, kind of the woman unbeknownst to her being pulled into a sexual act there's this amazing shot through the uh, red curtains and the camera moving slowly through the red curtains very very cool we have almost um slavic sounding music in here a uh, violin orchestrated something that you might have heard in eli roth's hostel 2 uh, it reminded me of that uh, for some reason and then we, we, we have this next story that is very, very interesting, dealing with uh, mystical dreams and a girl in the woods. Uh, but this girl in the woods is a, is, a, is a hostess on a plane, the way Ingrid Steger was at the beginning of the movie, the story at the beginning of the movie. And we have, um, this is, wow, this particular story is the... It's the anomaly in this particular film. If you had kind of some humor and some uh, frivility and, and, and jovial sex play and interesting kind of quirky stories and things like this, this one, um, you know, there's 
seemingly no, you know, humor, and it is, um, there's a sitar playing, and there's psychedelic music, and, and it's ritualistic, um, the camera is filming through things the way Jess Franco would. Um, very, very psychedelic. The number six is referenced. Six men, witchcraft, Satanism, almost a black mass type of vibe going on here. Um, and the, 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 it's, it's mentioned, the, the essence of Satan is mentioned in here. And it, this particular scene almost reminded me of another scene in an Irwin C. Dietrich film. Definitely in the same location in Hay. And it could have been one of his schoolgirl report type films. Um, and at first I was wondering if it was the exact scene, but then I was like, no, nah, I don't believe it is. Um, very, it, there's a ritual of sorts happening, ritualistic dancing. The music almost reminded me of Joe Sarno's uh, Vampire Ecstasy, which I've also looked at on this YouTube page. We have wild tongue kissing in here, wild tongue kissing the way, um, Drew Barrymore and Adam Sandler would mention his porno tongue in The Wedding Singer. And... There is wild stuff involving a snake in this particular story. A snake wrapping itself around a woman's nipples and uh, gliding through her vaginal hair and on her face. And it's referenced on the cover of the movie that I showed you. And multiple snakes. Interesting, wild, ritualistic. Is it a, is it a symbol of the devil? Um... And this wild uh, editing with image on top of image and bringing this surreal, psychedelic, dark vibe uh, to this story um, here. And then we, we, we end this movie with a story involving the same exact hostess from that previous mystical dream story, um, which by the way, is timeless, and it plays with time in a very surreal way in the edit, in the editing as well. And uh, the hostess is on a boat now, kind of taking this man around. And the conversations in this film, by the way, at the beginning of the movie with Ingrid Steger as the hostess, and then here with the hostess, very, very interesting. Uh, a lot of interesting um, interplay between the, the man and the woman and the talk of modesty and sexuality and then kind of the woman um, opening herself up, uh, you know, physically and, 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 and sexually and emotionally uh, to the man, um, almost in a way defying what the man said about what he loved about modesty. Very, very interesting. Um, and uh, there's a great quote here on the boat as we we're looking on the, you know, we're looking and getting a tour on the boat ride and the hostess says, oh, look over there, that's where I got divorced. I just thought that was a very interesting, uh, funny uh, line there. Uh, but modesty versus sexual freedom, a theme on this boat ride. And there's a very abrupt ending to this film. Uh, we never revisit the window washer or, 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 you know, kind of the wraparound story per se. It's an abrupt ending with this particular story, and it seems to have ties, since it's the same hostess, with the story right before it, in the woods. Mystical, surreal, snake. But here, we're, you know, we have this real representation of gender issues, man versus woman. And um, man kind of um, having his way with the woman and dumping her off. And really here in this last story, we have the theme of fantasies and dreams meeting reality and the, 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 the play of fantasies and dreams within gender issues, in particular within the lives of women. This is 1972's The Bed Hostesses by Erwin C. Dietrich. There it is, folks. Thank you so much for watching the 10 Room Bizarro YouTube page where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more, like The Bed Hostesses. Thank you so much, and good night.